Howdy! It's me, Paul Catalina. I hope you remember me. I was gone for six shows uh, over the last week because I was on vacation in Palm Desert or Palm Springs, California, a lovely place. And I plan on uh, buying one of Sinatra's houses uh, there one day. One of them's on the market for $4 million. So please watch this video about 70 million times and I might be a little bit on my way to get to Palm Desert and buy one of Sinatra's old houses. This is, of course, the Top five brought to you by Texas Beef House. Use our promo code SICKEM10 for 10% off of your order. Top five ACC QBs. Before I left, I did the Big 12 and the SEC. Let's dive into one of the other Power Four conferences in the ACC. Number five, Grayson McCall at NC State. One of the several transfers on this list as he comes in from Coastal Carolina where he's won a ton of games. He is a perfect fit for what they do at NC State. And if they have the weapons around him, which I think that they do, and the offensive line that they've had over the last couple years under Dave Doran, and that defense continues to be elite, they're not gonna have to ask Grayson McCall to do much to help them win. But the good news is he can do a lot. He's a He's a mobile quarterback-ish. Uh, he can get around. He can score. He can make things happen. He can get first downs. He can also make big plays in the passing game. Will be an upgrade over what they've had in the last couple years for sure. This is a guy who's won a lot of games at the college level at Coastal Carolina. Now gets his shot in the power four to prove that he is ready for the next level. Number four, Cade Klubnick at Clemson. A little lower down the list than, than probably most thought he would be. Struggled uh, a little bit in Garrett Riley's first year in the offense. Although I don't really blame Cade Klubnick for all of the struggles. Mostly, Clemson needs playmakers. They don't have those guys on the outside. They lost one of their number two wide receivers in Bo Collins, a guy who is going to be a nice possession target for him. They're going with some young guys all over the field. If those guys can produce quickly, then Kay Klubnick will have an even better year. But he's still a weapon with his feet and with his arm uh, and can do a lot of things with a very highly recruited guy uh, from Austin, Texas, uh, who steps in there. But Clemson needs to give him some weapons. And he lost a big one in Will Shipley, uh, who is off to the NFL. Uh, this year, but Cade Klubnick still is a guy who can make plays, and he won a lot of games for Clemson last season. Number three, Haynes King at Georgia Tech. Kind of high for a Georgia Tech quarterback, I know, but if you saw what Haynes King was able to bring to the Yellow Jackets last year, it was really impressive. That win against Miami, which, you know, of course, Miami kind of uh, kicked and gave to them, but uh, the fact that he was able to take the team down and score in that amount of time and showed a lot of poise. And the arrow is finally pointed up for the first time in a while at Georgia Tech, due in large part to people with leadership like Haynes King. Another guy from the state of Texas. Look, his, his father was a, is a longtime high school coach uh, here in the state. He's grown up. He's got one of those football brains. Now, if he can stay healthy, he's not, his, he's not that big. I mean, you can kind of see in this picture, there's an offensive lineman right here that just could swallow him whole or just put him in his back pocket and put the quarterback out there when he needs him. But he's very efficient, he's very tough, and he's very smart, and he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league. I'm going to make a pause right here and – and throw some love to a couple other quarterbacks, Kyle McCord at Syracuse, who went 11 and one last year. And I'm drawing a blank. Wonderful. Crap. I should know him because he was here at Baylor. He played here at Baylor and now he's at Virginia Tech. Kyron Drones, thank you very much. Please leave this in because I want people to see what it's like coming back from vacation and having vacation brain. I'll call it vodka brain. Uh, that's what I had. But Kyron Drones at Virginia Tech also could have made this list. Both very, very good quarterbacks uh, in their own right and thought about putting them in here. Kind of the Haynes King, Kyron Drones, uh, Kyle McCord circle, uh, if you will. So... Uh, embarrassment in that, not aside, I cannot believe I forgot Kyron Jones' name. He has stood in this very studio many times. I can't tell you how embarrassing it is for me to forget his name, considering he stood right here in this spot, and I've talked to him, because he was recruited here at Baylor, and during that recruit time, he and his father came in here quite a bit. Anyway... Moving on from my embarrassment, DJ Uyunglele at FSU. This is a guy who's also won a lot of games. Now, look, he has not lived up to his high school ranking yet. That has not happened. He's won games. He's lost games. 
Uh, he was much more efficient at Oregon State last year, and he steps into Mike Norvell's offense, which is very, very, very quarterback friendly. And with a guy with his skill set, is going to probably be really, really good. He's got a lot of talent athletically, can run. He's got a big arm. Uh, he's going to be able to make big plays in the passing game. They've got skilled players all over the field at FSU. This should be good for him, but no one should fool themselves into thinking that he's going to match Jordan Travis's last year at Florida State because that was a completely different thing. If he can get close, if he can get to 85% of that, Florida State's going to win a lot of games and contend for the conference title. But uh, I don't think people should put him on that same level with Jordan Travis just yet. But a ton of potential in Tallahassee for DJU, who comes back to the ACC with a vengeance, uh, probably wants to send a message to those Clemson Tigers where he used to play. And number one, this guy's one of my favorite players in all of college football. Unfortunately, he went to, uh, you know, Miami, which is a big rival. But still, respect to the Canes for pulling this off. This was a must-do for the Canes to get a big-time transfer quarterback to try to take them to the next level. They've got Damian Martinez in the backfield. They've got wide receivers all over the place now. They have set him up for success. Great along the offensive line. Their defense is really tough. Miami should be in contention for the conference and the playoff all year. As a matter of fact, the only thing standing in the way of Miami and the playoff is their coaching staff. If their coaching staff can remove their heads from their backsides and keep it simple, stupid, and let Cam Ward be Cam Ward and those playmakers be playmakers, they're going to win a ton of games because he is fun to watch. And you put playmakers around him like he's never had before in his entire college career, be it an incarnate word or at Wazoo, he is going to be electric, but you have to put him in those positions to make those plays, which is what Miami's problem has been for the last couple of years under Shannon Dawson as the offensive coordinator. They're kind of good, but not quite there, and they make some bad decisions, and Mario Cristobal knows all too well about that. But Cam Ward, the most electric player maybe in the entire SEC at, or ACC at any position. He should be excited to watch uh, down in Coral Gables this year. That's going to do it for the top five back in tomorrow where I promise to remember almost all the names again. We're back to wrap it up right now.